of a sermon. I agree. This is teaching. This is instruction. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 7 says this. Obey your leaders and submit to them. For they keep watch over your souls as those who will give an account. Did you hear that? I'm going to read it again. Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they keep watch over your souls as those who will give an account. Who will I give an account to? I'm going to stand before God one day and give an account. And I know that, and it scares me to death sometimes. I don't mean it, it makes me circumspect in how that I'm leading and, and living. The verse goes on to say, let them do this. Let leadership do this. Lead with joy and not with grief. For this would be unprofitable to you. So what is it saying? The pastor, number one, will give an account. Deacons as well will give an account. But it says that the grief of leadership, which is leading an unruly or rebellious people, the grief of leadership will not only be bad for the leadership, it says it, it, will, it will be unprofitable for the entire body. Think about Moses. Moses led with grief a people who were constantly rebelling against him. Do you remember what happened to those people? The ground opened up and swallowed them. Literally, the ground opened up and swallowed the rebellious people. So what it's saying is we submit to our leaders. Myself, as a, as a pastor in this section, I submit to my presbyter. I submit to the district leadership. We submit to those who are under or who are over us that it might be profitable for us. In closing, let me say this this morning. Probably the most important book I have ever read in my life outside of the Bible is a book entitled Undercover by John Bevere. I, I put it up there and, and I hope you will take that note down. I would highly recommend it. I bought this book to give to every one of my kids. I haven't read it just recently. The Lord just laid on my heart a couple of weeks ago, a month ago, that I needed to get this for all my children. I, I, undercover. It's talking about living under the cover of authority. Authority is a covering over us that shields us from different things. I would highly recommend that you get this book and read it. It will be a blessing into your life and I believe highly instructional. So the position of deacon is a spiritual role. Deacons are to be selected based upon their proven spiritual leadership, not their popularity, not their business skills. They come alongside the pastor in spiritual oversight and leadership of the church. Next time we'll talk more deeply about the qualifications for deacons as we read them today, but we'll talk in more, de in more depth about them. And I hope today maybe you've gained a little bit greater understanding about who should be serving in the position of deacons. As we're about to approach a business meeting in a few weeks and we'll be selecting deacons, maybe a new deacon, maybe to continue to put the, the ones who have been serving to continue to put that person who's, who's to be, who's reached his length of term, maybe put that person right back in. I, I'm not saying not to, but I'm saying hopefully today we understand why we choose certain individuals and what we're calling them to do. But I wanted to encourage us today through this message to seek God's will, to seek God's face, His wisdom in these matters. It is not a light thing, the selection of a pastor or deacon, spiritual leadership within the church. We're not looking to see who's the most popular person, who we think has the most business sense. We're looking for who God has chosen to be a spiritual leader within the church. So this morning, I want to encourage us. I want to ask you. That business meeting's four weeks off. But would you join me this morning around these altars and let's just spend a little bit of time in prayer saying, God, would you bring 
to put to leadership the man, the woman that you have choice for that position. God, would you prepare them? Would you let your call be upon them that they would be ready and willing to serve? And maybe that person, listen to me, might be you. Might be you. So would you come and join me uh, around the altars this morning? We're not even putting music on. I'm just calling you to a time of prayer. Would you come, maybe find a place at the altar, these front seats, and would you join with me in prayer this morning concerning the leadership and the direction of our church?